Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about the difference between the QNAP TS253D released during summer of 2020 and the TS253BE some two two and a half years old. We want to figure out whether you should be going for the brand new NAS or saving a bit of money and going for the older generation. They're both great solutions from QNAP. They both bring a lot of um, information and hardware and software capability to the table and both of them will serve you very, very well as a two-bay NAS. But given the price difference between them of around 80 to 100 quid, if you shop around, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that money. And is it worth going for the new generation now? Or should you pick up a bargain on the old gen? Maybe it's Black Friday, maybe it's Prime Day, maybe it's more. But one way or another, you may find there are ways to make a bit of a saving. And newer generation devices always arrive at peak price on day one. So is it worth investing early doors? Let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about what's the same. Both of them arrive with the latest generation of QTS with its support of Photo Station, Video Station, Music Station. There's Plex Media Server. There's their own QVR Pro software. There's Virtual Machine software. There's that multi-tiered backup software, um, hybrid backup um, Sync 3. You've got lots of DLNA media applications. You've got cloud applications. You've got mail applications. What I'm saying is... Both of them arrive with a huge amount of software capability built into them. In fact, both of them support incredibly similar levels of um, utility and performance in all of that software. The main difference between them is the depth and breadth of which you, of how you can use that um, software. Because both of them arrive with very, very different hardware inside. If you look at them, they've both got an Intel Celeron CPU, but the D arrived with a newer gen um, CPU. The old gen has the J3455, a 1.5 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.3 gigahertz, and it arrived with 2 gig of DDR3 memory that can be upgraded to 8 gig. Great stuff. The newer generation arrived with an Intel Celeron, but it's a J4125, which is a 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz, and it arrives with 4 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 8 gig. What does all of that tech mean in real terms? Well, first and foremost, it means that both of them support all of those apps and services, sure, but the D will almost always outperform, both in a single usage uh, situation with one user connecting via the network or directly, or with multiple users connecting, the D will outperform the BE. There are some exceptions, such as H.265 decoding and encoding, but that's one for our Plex video that I recommend you check out if you are looking at Plex Media Server. But in traditional transcoding of 1080p and 4K on both of these devices, of which they both support 1080p and 4K transcoding, Video Station will perform generally on the whole better on the newer gen than on the older one. Now, we talked about a lot of those hardware specs there. The memory difference does make a difference too. With a higher frequency, which means speed in real terms, um, on the newer generation, you are going to get things done a mite quicker as well. And then remember, 2 gig by default, 4 gig by default. And the changes don't stop there. Some of them are a lot more nebulous, such as the difference of three years of manufacturer's warranty and two years of manufacturer's warranty. So an extra year of coverage there. And both of them can be expanded up to five years if you so choose. Both of them have very similar chassis. Both of them are two-bay NASes. Both of them have got the LEDs there. They've both got USB 3 backups on the front there. They've both got a whole lot of ventilation all around the sides. But it's when we look at the rear that we see a lot of the difference. So if we look at the ports and connections on both of these devices, we can see quite clearly that they're very, very similar. In fact, let's bring them a lot closer to the camera. We can see that both of these devices have got very similar ports there. Sorry about the light going nuts there from behind the camera. The BE has got a speaker there. It's got two HDMIs. It's got audio in and out. It's got uh, two um, uh, HDMI ports and USB 3. four of them on the rear there. Whereas the newer generation device has got just one more USB 3 along with the one on the front. It's got USB 2. Doesn't have any of the audio in and out. Doesn't have two HDMI ports, and on the face of it, it looks like there's a lot less going on. Now, if you were gonna utilize the audio ports, you're gonna use it for karaoke or a standalone surveillance setup, or you're gonna use a standalone PC and you're gonna use keyboard, video, mouse, uh, along with the microphone setup, that can be very, very useful to you, all of that audio stuff. Likewise, if you're gonna be using lots of USB storage, if you're going to be utilizing that 5G adapter that QNAP have got, that's a 5GBE to USB adapter, and you're using multiple network connections, 
the B may seem like the better choice given its increased amount of HDMI ports, uh, of USB 3 ports. The HDMI ports there, although there's two of them, they only really support mirroring mirroring or uh, increased screen, screen size if using multiple monitors, um, but they are still two HDMI ports there. What makes the D not have these things? Well, a lot of that is because they've scaled a lot of the cost into other things. So, although there's the USB 2 ports, which are typically used for keyboard, video, mouse stuff, you know, peripheral devices, you've still got that USB 3 port, which is good. Um, but instead of the audio in and out that you're paying for there, you have two LAN ports there. And although this has got those two LAN ports, these are 2.5 GBE. So two and a half times each of those ports with a combined link aggregation possible of five gigabit Ethernet. So five GBE with a connected and supported managed switch or two port card. On top of that, the HDMI port is HDMI 2.0. So 4K, 10, uh, 4K, 60 frames per second along with 4K 1080p with this device only supporting 1080p 60 frames per second and 4K at 30 frames per second. So if you're going to use Kodi or Plex utilizing HDMI, you're going to use um, any of the QNAP's own multimedia ports, uh, multimedia software with that port. Bear in mind that this will allow that zero latency that HDMI has relative to networking of course, but will let you have 60 frames per second. And if you've got a 4K 60 frame TV, you're gonna want that one. The last big difference between these two is on that port at the top. The port at the top is a PCIe upgrade slot. It allows you to increase your network connections, add SSD caching, add combo cards from the QM2 series that allow you to add 10 GBE and SSD caching or raw SSD access in a single card in there. Both of them support that feature, which is great for those that want to edit the files directly on their NAS for photo work, uh, video work, content creation in general, or large-scale backups that need a faster connection than 1 GBE or 2.5 GBE. But the newer gen arrives with G uh, PCIe Gen 2 times 4 and the older gen PCIe Gen 2 times 2 So it's a faster speed of bandwidth on the newer gen, and newer generation cards have larger bandwidth requirements. The reason being that each device, uh, each kind of hardware um, advantage that those cards bring, like the combo card with 10 GBE and SSD caching, they both funnel into a single PCIe connection. So it's important to know that if you are using 10 GBE to its fullest speed, so that's a thousand meg, you need to know that the PCIe slot has got enough bandwidth in it to support the other feature, the SATA or NVMe SSDs. And Gen 2 times 4 is pretty good for uh, up to two, 3,000 megabytes per second NVMe and the 10 GBE card. But the 2 times 2 you're going to get bottlenecked there if you try to utilize NVMe to its high speed and the 10 GBU together. So that's one of the main reasons why that PCIe upgrade is so important. And those are the main differences between these two devices. Which one deserved your data is really up to you. But me personally, the price difference between them is small enough when you include the HDMI 4K advantage, the 2.5 GBU advantage, the PCIe advantage, and the extra year's warranty advantage 80 to 100 nicker does not sound like a lot of money. And that's why for me personally, I'd buy the new device. But maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe if you want to learn more. And visit the links to NAS Compares in the description to learn more about this device and other NASs in 2020. I'll see you next time.